we're going to do an elastic, a one-dimensional elastic collision problem. And if you recall, elastic collisions require um, a perfect elastic collision. Um, require that the kinetic energy before the um, collision is equal to the kinetic energy after. That allows us to use two equations to solve for two unknowns, the two final velocities. The one-dimensional elastic, uh, perfect elastic collision problem. Uh, so let's say we have um, two objects. We have uh, three kilograms here moving this way at uh, three meters per second. And we have another object here, and this is no friction. This is a frictionless surface. And we have a four kilogram object here moving at, uh, let's say, a minus four meters per second. And um, the objects collide elastically, <clears throat> perfect elastically, and um, find their final velocities, final velocities. That would be v1 final and v2 final. <clears throat> this uh, <clears throat> allows us to use, with, with it's a perfect collision, it allows us, to, there is no energy loss, and so it allows us to use the following equations. So we get uh, m1 <clears throat> v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final. This is the conservation of momentum. And the other equation we have at our disposal is the velocity equation. And I usually write it this way. Equals v2 initial plus v2 final. Sometimes in books they have the initials all on one side. It doesn't really matter. Their equation's valid either way. All right. So now we want to put in our information here. Uh, our information says that uh, let's call three. Let's call this m1 and let's call this m2. Okay. That's m1. This is m2. So m1 is 3. And I won't put the units in here because we already know that mass times velocity units are kilograms meters per square. Kilograms times a meter per square. Velocity 1 initial is 3. Mass 2 is said is 4. And velocity 2 initial is minus 4. Mass 1 is 3. And mass 2 is 4. So we plug in that. This becomes 9 minus 16 equals 3v1 final plus 4v2 final. And we get here minus 7 equals 3v1 final plus 4v2 final. We can no longer do anything else with that. We're stuck. That's about as far as we can go because we have two unknowns. But now we go to our velocity relationship over here. V, let me just move this up a little bit. v1 initial, as you see here, is 3 meters per second. V1 final, we don't know. V2 initial, which is over here, is minus 4 meters per second. And therefore, we can solve for one of those two and substitute it back into here. So let me do it this way. V1 final equals minus 7 plus V2 final. Just subtracted 3 from both sides. And now the strategy is to take this and plug it in for that right there, V1 final. And so let's do that. I get minus 7 equals 3. Always a good idea to put things in parentheses first. Don't do them in your head. V2 final. And I get minus 7 equals, now I'm going to distribute the 3 to here and to here. So that's going to be a minus 21 plus 3v2 final plus 4v2 final. So now I'm going to add, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 21 to this side, 
and 21 to this side. So that I get 14 over here. This becomes 0. They cancel out. And I get to uh, add these two together, 7v2 final. And we're almost there. So v2 final now is going to equal 14 over 7, or 2 meters per second. So that's my first answer for that. Now I'm going to take this and plug it back into there. And if I do that, I'll bring that down over here. I get v1 final equals minus 7 plus 2 meters per second. v1 final equals minus 5 meters per second. Uh, so that's my second answer. There's my one answer, and there's my second answer right there.